Hey guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Collaborative Warfare, the version of Kerbal Space Program where four YouTubers have taken the mods of BD Armory and the Kerbin side mini bases thing, split up those bases and decided to have war with each other in the way that all good YouTubers could. The first thing that we have to do today is a little bit of damage control or at least damage reports. We need to go and have a look at the, the boy George at the KSC and see exactly what Agonarch or at least itself had done to it. You'll notice that we were loading for a long time there. I did a little quick count. It has actually 30 seconds of load before I actually got anywhere near to be able to control here. I thought I would leave this in at real time just to show you the sort of thing we are having to deal with here. You can see the frames everywhere. Oh, it's painful. The first thing we need to do is find out exactly what weapons are still operational. In fact, the weapons are all still operational, the ones we can see. Which ones still have ammo? Now, taking a quick look around, I see no, no 30mm bullets and I see no cannon bullets. But I do see a couple of uh, boxes of 20mm bullets there. So, just having a quick scope around and figuring out what's going on. I think the Vulcan turrets are good and the Goalkeeper and the Millennium Cannon are not so good. So, th this is alright. This... The Vulcans are actually some of the best for stopping missiles, so I'm, I'm generally happy that this is a thing that we can leave here and, and be alright with. Uh, I'm trying to get this to just to just to fire, just so that I can tell for definite that it's working. The problem that I've actually got here that I didn't realise at the time was I have not activated those turrets. They will still work on guard mode and they will even work for a little bit just before they deactivate themselves, but at this present moment in time the Vulcan cannons will activate, go back down, and wait for an order that it can actually carry out. So I'm going to go around and just make sure that my guard mode and everything is sorted out. Everything seems to be working okay, or at least as far as an operational standpoint is concerned. We can go around and select all the weapons we need to select, the scan interval and the guard mode. All seems fine. I just, I really wanted to get some bullets out of one of these guns just to make sure that it was actually working. And it was around this time that I realised that none of my staging had happened. And unfortunately, I then threw a cannon away. Which, given the fact that it didn't have any ammo, doesn't really bother me all that much. And there's some bullets from the Vulcan turret, so I consider this a positive test. We still have a turret that will defend against some bullet, uh, against some missiles. Which is great. We're just going to let this last bit of footage roll through, just to show that all the Vulcan turrets do work. And then we're going to get to our attack mission. Welcome back to the KSC Runway, where we are running at double uh, edited speed. This is the Hornet. It is a vehicle that I have designed specifically to go and deal with the problem that we have on the Kerbal Space Center island. This problem is, of course, the fact that Chairman Agonarch, the evil tyrannical leader of the A Industries, has decided that he wanted to move in quite heavily at the KSC Island. And he threw, flew in a flying fortress of death, destroyed all the women and children that were making the flags for the soldiers out on the front lines. Worse than that, he left an infestation of Botfly, those horrendous parasitic beings that have now inhabited my island, and of course, a defensive turret as well so that's actually quite an impressive array of uh, defensive structures to deal with uh, I, I had a look at it sort of via the power of the spy satellite it's <coughs> weather satellite and yeah it, it was um it made me stop and think about how i'm going to deal with this it made me stop and think so i have come up with a different plan to, to what i normally uh, perform you can tell by the way that i have this tiny vessel that is just laden with weapons. We had a small flyby of the Poseidon there, so showing solidarity with my ally Penguin, who has obviously been so very useful at stopping attacks happen on my people so far. As we fly over to make our attack run, I'd like to take a moment to uh, talk about my approach towards this whole Kerbal Warfare thing. As the 100 of you out there who were with me before this whole crazy adventure started will know, I'm not exactly the most aggressive of game players out there. This didn't, I didn't think this would really bother me all that much, or at least hinder me all that much. As I had played around with BD Armory before, I could fly a plane. I thought I would have more than enough uh, skills behind me to be able to put, put up my own fight and um, lead the good good battle. This does seem to actually have been good enough to me keep me going all the way up until this point. In fact, I have not lost any of my bases at this point, so I am feeling particularly good about the way I've been doing this. The other, pro The only problem is... 
the other players, they, they actually seem to have things like plans and ideas, maybe even ships that they have thought about before the time their turn comes around. And this is leading me into a massive disadvantage here because I'm just not that good of a war player. I don't have any sort of background knowledge in sort of tanks or planes or any, any sort of tactics that work well in military terms because those things have just not interested me up to this point. But believe me, now these things interest me greatly. And I like to think that the few things that I have been learning during this particular journey I've been putting to good use in this way. I mean I have been able to put make ends out, take over bases, push back against these prepared forces that have been coming against me. So yeah, I think I'm doing alright, but believe me guys, I know I'm not doing amazingly well. Of course, these failings are purely my own, and whilst Twitch Shongi has yet to express any uh, overt displeasure at the way I've been handling his genius battle plans, I do fear that maybe I have displeased Glorious Leader somewhat, and uh, I fear for my life, people. I fear for my life. But anyway, we're just about to start this attack run, so let's drop down into regular speed. I should imagine that the fact that we are 10 kilometers up has confused a few people out there, but don't worry, there is a reason behind this plan. This reason is, of course, the fact that we have these drop pods here that I wish to drop down. Uh, the main thing is I wanted these to be falling whilst the Hornet was going in and doing its attack run. So I wanted the Hornet to be done by the time these things even get within range. So to that end, we came up to 10 kilometers. We've given it five kilometers to start falling. And now we're just gonna nose down with the Hornet, make sure that we have the Orb Weaver targeted because that's the one that's actually gonna do us all the problems. So in fact, that's the one that's doing all the major defending here. Uh, and just unleash a whole barrage of stuff. Now I did manage to loose off more missiles than I intended to here. We, we are just coming within a certain range where the, the the time stops and I had the mouse held down throughout all of this we've now got missiles to worry about but one thing to note there was the bot fly spontaneously combusting a uh, little bit annoyed about that more annoyed about the fact that I blew up my own vessel uh, that's that that was not best at all but there we go the orb weaver is taken down so we, we can be all right with that there are bullets raining everywhere, mainly from my things up top, the, the little drop pods I had, the Hornet probes. But with the loss of control and absolutely no weapon manager on board, we're going to have to eject out here and then start um, scanning around trying to find my own vessels. What I wanted to do was jump over to one of the uh, Hornet probes so that I could use the, the guns on there and, and actually like direct the Fury into a direction that I wanted it to be in. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find it, so I ended up just kind of looking around after that, just to see what was going on. And what I could see pleased me greatly. There was destruction going on everywhere, and I really mean everywhere. We were left with an infestation of botfly, and most people normally just direct their attack at those particular botflies when they get them. But no, I am going to burn the body that, that inhabits them. They inhabit. One day I'll make it through a commentary without messing up my words completely. So with the loss of any uh, actual like effective attack craft, what we're going to just have to do is wait for these uh, little probe bodies here to, to do their thing. Just go around, see what's happening. One thing I have noticed is the moth. The thing that I thought I really had taken out seems to still be attacking me. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that, why that is doing that, what's happened, what's still attached. I was fairly sure it, take, it took two hellfires to the face. I'm going to have to stop using the hellfires, I think. Whilst they are small and like nippy enough to make it through quite a lot of the the attacks i think i'm gonna have to start moving up to mavericks because almost all of aganarch's stuff seems to be a lot stronger um a lot tougher to blow up than i than i originally anticipated i'm not sure why that is uh, i have noticed that there is a lot of scaled up stuff on some of his things but then other things aren't and they just seem to be just as impervious so we can see bullets raining around everywhere, and indeed the moth is uh, very much trying to blow things out of the sky. I'm trying to figure out how I can get the blue, not the blue, the green circle up. That's why I was just mucking around with the uh, control B menu there. I still don't know BD Armory as well as I should, and every time I try and ask people about how I get this uh, auto-aim feature to, to muck around and stuff, I don't know. No, no one really seems to know what I'm going on about, let alone how to do the thing that I'm asking. So maybe Maybe I'm just absolutely rubbish at this. Maybe I, I'm just so bad that, that I think there's a problem with the, the thing and there's not. Whilst there are still bullets going back and forth here, uh, I can tell you that both of my little landing craft there make it down to the surface. And the only thing that I really want to show you... No, in fact, only one of them made it to the surface. We just watched it get blow up. The thing that I really want to show you... 
is the fact that the moth, yes, this moth here, still has some 50 caliber turrets on it and is still trying to defend the runway. I just, I just, what? Are you kidding me? There is still a turret up and over the hill, but if Agonarch can come along and attack my stuff and Poseidon's too far away, then that ant turret is also too far away to defend anything. That's that's the line I'm going with there. But this, this is definitely an issue that has to be dealt with. I have a couple of pods down there landed, but they don't have the line of sight. Citizens, welcome to my nexus of knowledge, where once a week I come forth to broadcast my lessons about the world around us to all the children of Northern Clathuru. It has recently come to the attention of my educators that some of you citizens out there are deluded about the state of the na nation of Clathu. And thus, all citizens have been mandated to partake in this lesson. You are all honored as I, your dear leader Twitch Yongi, will be taking this class for you. We start with a map of our glorious planet, Kerbin, and the district nearest and dearest to all of our hearts, Northern Clathu, the crown jewel of the nation of Clathu, home to Clathulian Space Center, many wondrous island resorts for the many Clathulians to come from all over the nation to vacation, our commercial east coast, and the re-education re facilities of the north. Northern Clafu is itself part of the Clathulian Peninsula, and trusted, until very recently, to Regent Velox, Across the water we have Southern Clefu, home of the barren Antarctic wastes and maybe a penguin or two. Given what we know so far, it should come as no surprise to the more intelligent of you citizens out there that these are East and West Clefu, home of nothing notable. To the extreme north is Liederland. It is forbidden to go there. Anyone who chooses to go there will find themselves a most horrible death, where the forces left over from my arrival onto this planet will rip any normal Kerbal limb from limb Flay the skin from their body and obliterate their mind across all ages. Now that you know these geography truths, you can continue about your lives enriched by the safety of these true knowledge facts. Glories. Welcome back to Black Crags, the base of conflict that all of you are getting very familiar with now. We have been here more times than I care to mention, and for some reason, this seems to be the base that takes the most hammering whenever I'm away or anything like that. So, this has lost all its defences. Um, again, I'm not sure how this happened, because Penguin has a plane defending this place. So, how did I lose my... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's really confusing. I don't even remember seeing it on Agon Archers. One little known fact about these defensive robots here are they are actually the North Clathu Ballet Troop. Uh, they have been training for many years now since they were wee little microchips to come out here and dismount in the most graceful manner possible before sanding around and defending our base of Black Crags here. Uh, we have these tiny little things. The main part of their body there is actually a tail boom but I just love the shape of it. It's this nice little triangle which we could put a track on the back and a couple of wheels up front and I think it's just a badass little looking machine. Uh, obviously it follows the same principle as all the other tiny pods that we've got. It's got two guns, a couple of missiles, nothing really too over the top here uh, just because that's, that's all we're allowed on these defensive probes or on any probes in fact that aren't the main, main body of the vessel we're deploying from. Okay once again another ballet dismount amazing absolutely mate i am i am just blown away by the grace poise and elegance of these things i'm going to make the effort to deploy these perpendicular to each other that's like at right angles to make sure that the uh guns on top are covering full arcs in every direction so they all they full face sort of each of the cardinal directions 90 degrees round from each other that should hopefully give me enough coverage to at least deflect a missile or two make some sort of like serious defensive stance at this base uh again it's it's just a small probe there's not really too much going on here but i'm hoping it'll stop anybody just walking in and parking next to penguins plane and claiming the base as their own then comes the next great job of trying to get this base down to woolly pool that is the next site that agonarch had destroyed on his way through down to the kerbal space and i'm basically going to be following his path from that point forward but using this my ground-based uh, attack platform. I kind of feel that it is a, a, an attack platform. I've got missiles on the side. I've got a defensive nest in the middle to uh, keep the actual vessel itself shape, safe. Uh, I have a couple of uh, docking pods on the outside as well. Just sort of more wishful thinking than anything. Uh, in case I ever want to store anything on here, that's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, the way that I've used the decouplers in the middle of the sort of 
I don't know, the, 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 the connecting platforms there. Uh, has meant that I can't really make it so anything else can dock there, but I think those little things we can maybe use our nose to, to hook on with and then have something else to hold it in place. I don't know. Anyway, we are so screeching down this runway, and then I suddenly notice that there is a lip at the end, and the last thing I want to do is go over that. It was screaming off to the side, but thankfully we managed to go be safe, and now we're just going to have to make our way down to the beach because you know the next big thing to do here is to try and make the transition from land to water gonna take real time about it because you know bumpy land real dangerous uh, you will notice that I also have one of those slowy down things on the back uh, very much taking my cue from Agonarch there you know he, he had solved this problem for me so I thought well why not take that on board the landing gear definitely is a must here in fact to the point of inside my testing if I left this anywhere in the water without the landing gear deployed uh, the, specifically the wheels not like the landing gear the landing legs that's not good enough the landing gear has to be there to stop my vessel sinking into water and exploding I, I don't know why one works but the other doesn't no idea my plan of attack whilst rolling down this hill was to try and enter at less than 10 meters per second. We went in at 25, so um, as long as I keep to those sort of margins, I think we're going to be safe in whatever we're going to do. I'm now going to try and practice my stop maneuver because, you know, once we made it into the water, that is one of the major things we want to do. And given the number of crashes and everything else that goes on, I really want to try and save it here so I don't have to make it all the way from Black Crags, even though it was only something like 10 kilometers, all the way from Black Crags back to this water because. Oh, it would just it would just be so much I mean it says 10 minutes on the on the clock there I can tell you that it actually took me closer to like an hour it oh it was terrible and bearing that in mind it says down the bottom that we have 130 kilometers to go towards woolly pool it's a long way that's a real long way and and it's a real long time for that as well so I, I just want to push out that 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 was kind of something that was going on here putting ourselves down into the water seems to be going okay in fact all we need to do now is turn off all those um lifters and we are settled in the water well enough for us to do a quick quick save yes a quick quick save uh and then we're going to lift ourselves back up and see how that performs on its lift off it the takeoff is fine so now all we've got to do is point ourselves in the right direction hit full throttle forwards and just leave it and I will tell you now, I had to leave it for about five hours. Uh, it was uh, thankfully I had like books and stuff that I could read, but it totally took up all my computer time, and ah, uh, it was long. It was literally all evening. We're gonna have a few quick middle of the ocean shots here, just to show you that I did actually make this uh, this trek across. It was, as I say, incredibly long. We are not 40 miles away, uh, 40 kilometers, sorry, away at this point. The mission clock reads 18 minutes. The mission clock lies, the mission clock lies, big style. Uh, I was running through uh, about 8 frames per second at this time, so if you want to kind of multiply that up, you know, say that the uh, average running speed is 30, 30 frames per second, you can tell that, you know, I really was taking my time to do this here. This is, of course, the, entirely the fault of the engineers of Northern Clothu. They thought that maybe the 10 engines on the back here would be good enough to push this vehicle at something approaching a decent speed. I did not break 150 kilometers per second the entire time that I was cruising along here. So, yeah, that, that totally my own fault there such a shame but we are within five kilometers of woolly pool here so we're starting to think about how we are going to make landfall uh, i have noticed that all the cliffs are quite large here so i'm not sure if we're gonna well at this point i wasn't sure if we were going to actually make landfall completely or just go up to the beach land that land down our little ramps and let the the vehicles out uh, about this point i was like yeah i think i'm gonna go with that one so let's start trying to slow down we are going at about 50 meters per second we're not really losing speed all that fast we're probably gonna have to start thinking about deploying the little slowy down feet at the bottom there or turn ourselves around and push back but the way that that uh, shadow is coming up and getting ever so close underneath my vehicle makes me think that maybe we're gonna run out of room we're going to have to hold our breath and see what happens here. We're going to fire up our engines to full throttle and just see if we can possibly... There we go. Null our speed down to zero. We're now left with the uh, the rather awkward situation of having to deal with ten really powerful engines trying to very gracefully push this quite large vehicle around. Um, I didn't do an amazing job of this. and In fact, we're going to watch me pirouette around a couple of times here before mounting the, the, the ramp. I should have just hit 
full-blown go here. I should just be like, right, go, we'll get up there. But no, for some reason, I thought the best plan would actually be to drop down these landing gear and try and stop myself on the slope. Uh, I'm not sure what was going on there, but... You know, we managed it anyway. So we're going to try and bring ourselves to a dead stop on the surface of the water here, but preferably with the waves lapping around our landing gear. And that is roughly what I managed to achieve here. So with the actual landing gear put down, or landing legs, and it really needs some way of differentiating between the two. With our landing legs firmly planted, it's time to bust out this ramp and see how the ballerina squad deals with this. We are, of course, leaning backwards a little bit here, so I am worried. Uh, but they managed to spring themselves forwards. We have to go through a couple of vehicles to get to the one we're looking for here. Uh, and now I have all sorts of issues here. There are lots of things in the way to make me bounce around. Uh, this one managed to dis dismount relatively smartly. In fact, the smartest dismount we've seen so far off this vehicle, which leads me f leaves me sorry, full of hope, joy and optimism about how well we're going to be able to get the second one off. The main thing we need to do now, though, is to find out where we're going to position these things. Now, obviously, we need to put it up somewhere to be with the Centurion and Largy Kerman. I can't remember whether the Centurion here actually is still operational or not. I think it took a hit which separated its um, weapon manager from its actual weapons, thus rendering it completely useless. It's, uh, it's one of my major design flaws in almost all my vehicles is my weapon managers and my weapons are too far apart from each other. Rest assured this is something that has actually changed, especially after taking on Agonarch at the Kerbal Space Center island there and taking some note as to why his, his vehicles were so hard to do, uh, take down. Okay, so now we end up with the runt of the litter. This one obviously has not been training for anywhere near as long as the others. Uh, it's managed to get itself stuck on the middle body there. Also behind some guns. You can see that the guns are, uh, are really causing it a bit of issue. And now I have fully Austin powered it in between two walls here. Um, so we're just going to have to kind of scoot around, try and get myself pointed in some sort of direction that will be helpful. I'm wondering if we can like back out of it instead of going forwards. And, and thankfully this actually appears to be the... Uh, the plan that works. We do get ourselves down in a funny manner though and manage to blow up one of our missiles which is not graceful and then we have we're in full danger of getting ourselves into the water and drowning but thankfully the track comes into play we manage to line ourselves up we are down a missile which it's not the best plan but given how bad it could have gone uh, we could have just completely written this one off especially like how bad it was going given how bad it was going we could have easily blown up the attack carrier that we had and that that would have been all sorts of wrong now okay so we're going to uh, bring this one up but I not, can't remember whether I put it right next to it I was trying to keep a bit of distance between all my little defensive turrets here because we didn't want them to be taken out with the same missile we, we want them to at least have to like change their target and take on another vehicle if they want to come and take over this place and now we have the fun job uh, the eight hours long job of trying to make our way around this headland here. Uh, we are obviously on the other side of the Clothulian Peninsula from what, where we want to be. And as this vehicle is not one that can fly, and as I have previously mentioned, it takes a long time. This is going to take a long time. A real world sleep later brings us to this point here, where we are finally at the point where I can start thinking about making some sort of attack. Uh, we are about 30 kilometers away from the KSC island there and started to wonder when would be the time to settle down. Now whilst I am fairly sure I could just w waltz in at the moment and clean up with my Vulcan turrets and stuff like that, it's not really the most impressive way to do stuff. So what I'm going to do is stop here. I have no other use for my cruise missiles so we're going to put them to use right here. I'm not, not going to attack any bases this round, hopefully. If things go well in the interim, I will be using it to attack bases next round, but we're just going to have to see how it does against any assault that comes its way. To be honest, it's not got the greatest array of defensive capabilities. I mean, those Vulcan turret nests in the middle is really good. That should be able to stop most things coming in, uh, but it's not particularly strong if it does take a direct hit. So we'll just have to live with that however it comes. So we're starting to slow down now. The... Uh, technique that I have used for this is I have to deploy my air brakes until we're definitely below 40, um, 40 meters per second. Then I need to uh, turn around and use my engines to slow down now or at least that's what I should have done but because I've had my engines turned off for long enough now these uh, repulsors aren't quite as powerful as I was hoping and we're having a little bit of trouble. Thankfully I have managed to slow, slow down enough 
to actually make it so we can we can put down and be safe we know we can enter the water at something like 15 meters per second and still be safe so that is exactly what i did okay we had an auto save there much like one of Aganarch's turns earlier on a very fortuitous auto save once again a time where i launched too many cruise missiles at one one vehicle i mean the the moth only had like a a unit left with some with a, a couple of turrets and a weapon manager on i only needed to send something like four there but i held down the button for too long with stuff like uh, stuck with that and we're sending these guys in at the ant turret just just to be sure how it goes now, Aganarch was also having trouble with the sound of his missiles, or the lack of sound on his missiles. And you'll notice that I also had a problem with that until we left a certain range of my vehicle. I don't know what causes this. Uh, it looks to be some sort of causality problem, yeah, like because, because there's a, a big airship there, we don't have any missile sounds. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. We just watched the moth get destroyed. We also watched how good the placement of that AI turret was. That's no real problem as the hill that is protecting it is also protecting me. So we go to swap back to the uh, dreaded Ganache and we have a horrendous crash and have to come back in. I, I went to the auto save. I fired the exact same attack that I did. Everything was, was back as it was we get rolling here so my plan here is just to come in towards the little landing dock that is at the bottom edge of the Kerbal Space Island uh, there there's this sort of almost a fishing dock that Kerbal found not Kerbal Foundry's Kerbin side has put in that uh, I, I think would be great uh, the reason that I'm not going actually up onto the plateau itself is because that the cliffs around the outside of that is just so steep so incredibly difficult to get up anyway what we're gonna do jump forward a little bit because i am sick of the sight of watching this thing go over water and we're going to come up for our actual approach here you can see the devastation that i laid down at the end of my turn i went through and uh deleted all the debris here i i hope that i didn't take away anything that had any weapons on it but that's why i flew this up here that's why i also had the drop pods to see what was still operational and what wasn't Turns out not much was operational after we got hit by the uh, cruise missiles there. And we're going to come in for a nice slow stopping procedure. We've already been using our air brakes as much as we can. And now we're going to use our engines to try and make us stop before we go up that hill. We don't. We really don't want to go up that hill too far. Uh, now that I have a, a second look at it, I possibly could have climbed that. But then that's the same sort of situation I had at Woody Pool. I probably could have climbed it if I wasn't already committed to trying to stop like this. Uh, when I make my way up there, I'm like, okay, I've stopped. Let's just slam it down on the floor. Didn't really work incredibly well. I think the problem there is the ones on the back got set to a different, um, different group number, as you can see there. And everything just kind of didn't respond in the way that I hoped it would. But now that we're settled in the water, I'm like, well, we seem stable. I'm going to put myself down here. This is good enough. And what we'll do is we will climb out of this vessel to go and lay, lay down our flag. Of course, not before quickly having a look around, finding things with any weapon managers. There doesn't actually appear to be any, even like all the offensive weapon. There was one to worry about, but that was actually my own craft. So that was all good. Uh, and all the others seem to have been completely destroyed. So yay, we did it. And finally, just to cement my claim here, we're going to get the uh, the Kerbal out of our thing and realise that we had brought a wrong flag with us. I, I don't know what happened there. Obviously, with all the women and children that got killed earlier that were making the flags, we're now having to like scrabble around and try and find normal flags elsewhere to take part in the glorious conquest that is Northern Clefou. Anyway, I've claimed that island. I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time where we continue this conquest in the name of dear leader, Glory.